<laughs> I know what day it is, and I know what I'm doing today. Uh, today is civil warfare, and um, I'm kind of high key exhausted. Like very exhausted. Last, what is it now? 77, 78 days have been long. And although I'm not completely spent, uh, clearly, because I'm still sitting here making a video today because I need to keep some kind of routine, it is becoming more and more difficult to get out of bed in the morning and I just want to send out a reminder that if you're not feeling well, it's okay to admit that you're not feeling well. I know I need to keep a routine because once I stop keeping the routine, that's when things will really go south for me. So I'm going to continue keeping the routine. I'm sorry if the entertainment value of today's video is just not there. I apologize for that. I high key just thought of not uploading at all today and just staying in bed and not getting out of it. But I don't want to do that. I want to continue doing this for myself, for people who are expecting things to go up today, and I don't know. I don't know. I think I think everyone's having a tough time, and I'm not having as tough a time as a lot of people out there. My situation isn't as dire. It's not as stringent. Um, I don't need to worry about a lot of things. And I don't know, I, I think I should avoid making excuses for things like this. So I'm going to continue today's video. We're going to do a little bit of scent warfare and then we're going to go through some questions that you've asked me through Twitter that I've been keeping a little log on because I think that that would be an interesting thing to do today. There isn't a lot of news for me to report on. Uh, if I'm being completely honest, some really traumatizing stuff is going on around the world that I would like to comment on, but I am in no mental position to do that as of yet, so that won't happen for a little while. I'm sure for those of you who are keeping up with the news, you're aware of some of the stuff that's going on in the world that needs, needs commenting on, and I will in the coming week. Uh, I'm just still kind of processing it and also I feel like I have to be in the right mindset to address it, especially since I try my best not to hyper edit all of, all of my work, especially in my more serious videos. I never used to edit anything out but um, I do a lot of umming and eyeing in my videos and I would rather you didn't have to listen to any of that. But this is what we're doing today and I deeply apologize for my energy being so low today <laughs> but it just is what it is feel free to leave right now hit that you know smash that dislike button and just walk off i would not blame you in the slightest later in the day we might play a video game and just relax because like that's kind of what i want to do today is just sit down and play a video game and for those of you who are going to jump out in the comments and be like say why are you wearing a cross around your neck because I felt like it and that's it. I know every time I wear a cross people are always in the comments and in the live chat it's always Faye why are you wearing a cross? Because I feel like wearing a cross but I think it's a cool accessory. Um, there's not much else to it <laughs> but anyway we're gonna move into this so yeah I hope you stick around there's only a couple of things that I wanted to comment on a, a few infuriating things that I don't know I have the energy for but I'm gonna try regardless um, and hope that it just it just works out. <laughs> Last week, Simple Warfare was packed with stuff. This week, not so much. So we're gonna do, as I said before, a little bit of this, and then move on to doing some just some questions that you've asked me. So first things first, that I want to report at some point in this week, Anya Aiden, who was quite a I'm not going to say popular, but she had some kind of a following. She was an ex-Muslim and on May 23rd, she decided to revert back to Islam. She said, is the timeline awake? Okay, I reverted back to Islam. Uh, Alhamdulillah. 
she didn't even spell that right. It was in Ramadan. Normally I wouldn't have a problem with it. I'm not even sure I, I do have a problem with it, but I was informed that her sole reason for converting back seems to be that she wants to be discriminatory towards gay and trans people, which my original comment on this whole affair was wishing her the best because I'm always wishing people the best for whatever choice they want to make. I've always said since the beginning, I don't care what you choose to believe. I think that everyone has their own little delusions and that's fine. I think it's, it's normal for people to hold onto delusions to make them feel comfortable in whatever existential uh, reality they live in. I, you know, when I first saw it, I knew people were going to kind of bandwagon against this, but when I heard Shmariana kind of actually pointed it out to me, she said that this is the same person who turns and calls the people who run uh, LGBTQ Somalis a safe haven from discrimination hateful. Do we really need to wish her well? I mean, she's Muslim for 10 minutes and behaves like this. It's pathetic. It really is kind of disgusting to see how quickly, not just how, like if we go through this feed, and also I'm on my uh, old account because Anya's actually blocked me on the account that I use. My old account is still suspended by the way, but I can still access it and look at stuff. So this is what she said. Uh, I reverted back to Islam. Uh, Anya, uh, no, I'm not joking. I don't owe anyone an explanation. Uh, I've been Muslim now for a few weeks and I'm very happy with my, with my decision. Eid Mubarak, friends. I personally didn't know her very well. I didn't interact. I don't interact with a lot of people on Twitter anymore because I don't, I don't personally think it's good for me. I, I try to keep my Twitter activity to as minimum as possible unless I'm in the right mindset to be there. So I didn't really talk to Anya very, very much. But people who seem to have interacted with her a lot more just seem to be sort of like questioning it, like what happened and, you know, wish you the best, all kinds of stuff. But there seems to be this idea that ex-Muslims are coming out and like denouncing her simply because she convert converted back to Islam when it's clear that she's been really, really homophobic and transphobic since like converting back. Um, and it seems to be a pretty sole reason for why she's done that. Mariana had said, I will make a thread later today about Anya. I'm sorry, but her behavior needs to be called out and she shouldn't dare say, oh, you're only coming for me because I'm a Muslim. She soft blocked me so I couldn't find her transphobic slash homophobic tweets. And I've asked to be tagged in that thread and I, I have that thread, so we'll have a look at it. She, she also called me pathetic. I don't know where that came from because I've only wished the best for her. She called me pathetic because I wanted to know more about something that she actually did. Gaga Huakbar, who we've had them on this channel before, made this thread and I think that it's important for people to go through it and see what's been posted. So Anya Aiden decided it was okay to bully my friend Alice and I'm fucking pissed off. Anya Aiden recently posted this as well as telling people not to support LGBTQ underscore Somalis. She's entitled to her own opinions, however I draw the line when people say things to intentionally hurt others, I'll be giving my thoughts later. The word gay and Muslim should never be in the same sentence and some of them make it a point of being proud to be Muslim and gay. They know nothing about the deen they claim to follow. Anya, bitch, listen, you do not get to decide how people identify. As much as it doesn't make any sense to me, and I've said on many occasions that that moniker being both gay and Muslim makes very little sense to me, but just because it makes no sense to me does not mean that I can suddenly disallow people to call themselves that. You know, saying that they know nothing about the deen they claim to follow, I, I would disagree with you because there are many different shades of Islam. Islam and the way that people practice it is not monolithic. In any idea, there's always going to be offshoots and fringes of different interpretations of that idea. And while I don't completely agree with the whole um, gay Muslim, Muslim gay narrative, and I do support them 100% because I feel like you should be accepted for whatever shade of belief or you know sexuality that you have going on, yes, it makes no sense to me. But just because it doesn't make any sense to me, does not mean I'm going to denounce those people and say that they shouldn't be 
a certain way. But this wasn't the only thing that Anya said. Alice called her out on a transphobic slash homophobic tweet she made, and instead of explaining her views, she misgendered Alice multiple times. And these are the tweets, thankfully they've been saved. It's just pathetic to me, lol, at her big age, arguing with a freshman in high school. I really have to laugh, get a job, tell him not to tweet me, thanks. Instead of taking the time to insult 15 year olds, Somali here, uh, Orod hijab kahiro, I think that means uh, put a hijab on since you're now suddenly Muslim. Lol, tell that coward to go home off private, why, why is he always hiding? She is a 15 year old girl. Stop encouraging people who have a mental illness and indulging them in their fantasy it isn't healthy. Gender dysphoria, well I guess it could be considered a mental illness. I think it, it's been like, I don't want to get into this argument, I don't know too many things about it. I want to just plead ignorance immediately because I don't know much about trans issues. This, the only way that you can deal with it is by accepting the gender that you feel. You can't really do anything else about it. There isn't a cure for it. There isn't, you know, the reason why people with gender dysphoria have this need to transition is because they feel more comfortable in their bodies. Um, and again, I don't know everything about this and I would highly recommend that you go and check it, like go and listen to actual trans people and talk about their struggle but it's not indulging in their fantasy because in their own mind it is not a fantasy in their mind they identify with the gender that you refuse to identify with and that is the reason that they feel the need or the want to transition into the gender that they feel mentally at least that to my, that's the extent to which i understand it again like please do check out some uh, trans youtubers some trans people talk about their own struggles Sarah Michelle is one of my good friends, you can go and check her out. You know, Blair White, while I don't agree with everything she says and I want to make that very, very clear, she does have some very interesting videos on what it's like to have gender dysphoria and what it's like to transition and I think that it, it would be good for people to learn about these things. I'm still on that learning path and I think it's really, really ignorant to tell somebody to stop, you know, indulging in a fantasy. I have mental health issues, certainly not gender dysphoria, but other mental health issues. You know, I have depression, I have PTSD. Me wanting to talk about those issues and saying how I feel, no matter how ridiculous it is. Like, for example, um, with my current eating disorder situation, I do this because I don't actually know if I have an eating disorder. It, it hasn't been confirmed, I haven't had the consultation, we've gone over this. But with that, I have a lot of intrusive thoughts that will, you know, set, pass me a narrative that I do not deserve to eat for A, B, C reason. You know, while that is mentally how I feel, me talking about it and having people understand it and then learning to overcome it in some way, be that through, you know, through some sort of cognitive behavioral therapy or something else is important. It's not indulging in a fantasy. Just because you don't feel it and you don't need to do that does not mean that that person going through that and taking the steps to make themselves feel better within their own selves is a fantasy. It just doesn't... It, it's really, really ignorant to do that. Like, ignorant in a bad way. Like, it's disgusting. It, the, uh, the screenshots continue. She continued to misgender her and repeated the phrase Wanin, which means he's a guy in Somali. And uh, there are some screenshots here that you can read. Lol, tell that cow to go come off private. Why is he always hiding? Excuse me, the fuck? That's so disrespectful and triggering. What you don't do is misgender someone. It's called common decency, which you lack. I take my opinion from biology and sex, not Twitter. Wanin, end of discussion. I honestly at first thought you were being mean to Anya Aiden just because she reverted this is an ex-Muslim by the way just because she reverted but then I truly understood the situation it's definitely bigotry lol tell that coward go come off private why is he always hiding a 15 year old girl has you this pressed lol wanin Gaga Huakbar then continues uh, by writing this thread he said honestly I don't give a fuck about whether you're a Muslim or not the fact that you 
fucking bullied my friend and triggered her dysphoria speaks volumes as to what you think about the LGBT community. Don't even try to play the victim. I would have went after you even if you were an ex-Muslim. You're entitled to your own views, sis. I honestly think that's your right. But don't go out of your way to hurt somebody else. I mean, nothing worse than a, than a Somali Hanis, you poor huyo. Uh, Hanis is a, it's like a derogatory term for um, someone who's gay, I think. Um, if I'm mistaken, please do feel free to correct me. But that's, I, I, I don't think it's pronounced Hanis, I think it's pronounced Khanis, I can't remember. But it's, it, it's gross regardless. It's gross. It's gross. It's gross. Because right now, it really does look like she's converted back to Islam so that she can have a reason for hating on LGBT people. When I came out as bisexual, I've, I'd gone through all of my struggles. It wasn't hard for me to come out as bisexual. So I do not understand that struggle and I just don't feel like I'm the right person to talk about it. Obviously, we do have more extreme cases in other parts of the world. We have cases here in, in the Western world where people will be disowned and kicked out of their homes and honor killed and all kinds of stuff. And I think it's really, really gross. It's really, really, really gross that someone would go out of their way to do this and they've found a way to do it that wouldn't immediately affect them. Like I feel like if she had said those things um, without converting back to Islam, it would have been a bigger problem and people would have taken larger issue with it. She may have even gotten suspended. But because she's speaking from a perspective of a questionably, you know, protected group, it's it's okay and it's gross. I don't like it. She also tweeted this. I ask forgiveness from everyone that I previously have offended with my words. I am truly sorry. I've said a lot of vile stuff on Twitter and it's something I'll have to live with. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on me. You're still saying horrible vile things and offending people like I, I i will forever say that offense should not be the moniker by which we police speech it shouldn't be because you can be offended by anything but if you're asking for forgiveness from people for what you said while you were an ex-muslim it's not really saying much because you're still saying vile shit while being a muslim it's gross. So this is a completely different argument. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what the background situation of this is, but I was sent this by um, Zanzi Linux, um, Zanzi Source. Maybe you should look around you. A twig does not come into existence on its own and you think a perfectly functioning universe came into being by itself. This is not a perfectly functioning universe. We're in the middle of a global pandemic that tells you that this is not a perfectly functioning universe There are se there are hundreds of thousands of millions of things I'm sure that go wrong in the universe all of the time and, and you are right a twig does not come into existence on its own but what science has taught us is that the world that you know and love and attribute to something you don't know exists came over a process, like it, it came through a process. And I'm sure if you sat down to learn about it, it wouldn't be difficult to grasp. But unfortunately, people want uh, false answers for things they don't understand. And that's sad. That's really, really quite sad. Moving on from that, under uh, another thread under Anya's revelation that she reverted back to Islam uh, had caused us to actually talk about something that, an argument that I refuse to have, which is the, the age of Aisha and Muhammad's pedophilia. If, for those of you who don't know, Muhammad, he married her at age six and then raped her at age nine. And I said that I would not address this again unless I came across an argument that I'd not seen before. And I'd finally come across an argument that I hadn't seen before that I feel like is extremely laughable, it's not a real argument, but I felt like it was worth bringing up anyway because it's absolutely fucking hysterical. And he was responding to Daryl, which read LFC blood, well I don't support Liverpool. Great guy, Daryl is a great guy. And they were talking about the age of Aisha 
And Daryl said, the sources don't exactly transmit the story. There are many hadiths where Aisha shows disdain and contempt for Muhammad and the circumstances she lived under. That's not saying she was deeply unhappy, just that the picture you paint is not entirely accurate. This saying that um, the claim that Aisha was really, really happy with the Prophet Muhammad, which is a narrative that a lot of Muslims will pass, that it, it doesn't really matter that she was a child because her marriage was very, very happy and Muhammad tre treated her in a certain way, which is not really saying much, if, if I'm being completely honest. She was essentially groomed by a 53-year-old man since she was six years old and then encouraged by people she trusted, like her father and her you know, closer relatives, her sister, uh, her mother, all of that kind of stuff. It, you know, if you look into the psychology of that, it's really quite disturbing. But Abdullah had decided to respond to that by saying, what the actual hell? Are you for real? I've never heard about this. If that's the case, then why didn't she attempt to kill him to escape from this? Or why did she did she scream out of grief when she realized that he sallallahu alaihi wasallam passed away what's your point and i responded by saying because she didn't want to be burned at the stake you psycho and abdullah decided to respond aisha was intelligent unlike you she would have devised a plan to kill him so his servant would be framed for this so everyone will understand the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was a false prophet because he died before the final revelation and conquest of makkah islam would have extinct your point and i said she was nine years old when he raped her get a grip and uh, it goes on is that the best answer you have you need to get a grip aisha ra could have stopped islam spreading all the world by killing him before his final revelation she had been with him for more than 10 years come on think about this you are dull if you think that a nine-year-old could kill a warlord and frame one of his sex lives so she could be nine, nine years old for 10 years, LMAO, oh, okay, cool. Everyone praised her for her intelligence, so she obviously could have done this. People praised her for her intelligence because she could parrot Muhammad. Again, he was a warlord and she was a child. I mean, I might be the crazy one here, but I don't think it's ridiculous to say that killing Muhammad might have been a harder thing to do than Abdullah is trying to posit here. You're really lost. You clearly don't know what Aisha R.A. has done for Islam. If she hates the Prophet, then why did she encourage Muslims to defend Muslims to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and talk them about Islam passionately? You're actually dense. The same reason she led an army against Ali and killed thousands of Muhammad's companions, which is a true story by the way. You don't know the real story. Of course not, Abdullah. You've known me for all of 10 minutes, but I don't know the real story. It would, it would happen because of misunderstanding. Yeah, that's how wars happen, because of a misunderstanding. Aisha didn't lead for this. She went and found the killers of Uthman. Ali and Aisha met each other, then have arbitrary, but some killers went and killed some of them. That's how this battle started. That's not how war works. And might I add, thousands of people don't just accidentally kill each other without the notice of both army leaders that's not how that works I, I don't know how old abdullah is i'm hoping that they're like a teenager that doesn't quite fully grasp what the fuck is going on but you don't just like leaders don't just decide to have a parlay and then both the armies just start fighting in the background killing thousands of each other and then they come out and we're, we're just like oops you know it, that's not how war works Especially not in that day and age where where you couldn't just fire a missile from miles and miles away and kill a thousand people. That's not, it's, they actually had to physically go and fight. And then he continues by saying, she didn't command her soldiers to do this. Some of her soldiers did it. So Aisha Ra went outside in order to stop them. And that resulted in taking some arrows. Again, not how war works. Um, Cause some killers did it to her. Ali saw this and ordered his soldiers to stop. And that's how it stopped. No, Ali won and then accepted terms because that's how a war works <laughs> Ali won the battle and they had a discussion following that battle and one of the only reasons he let her live following that disagree disagreement if we're gonna misunderstanding if that's what we're gonna call it is because she was the wife of Muhammad is because she was a mother of the believers that's that's the only reason why he let her off 
it, it oh it's so frustrating it's so frustrating it's really not that difficult to understand like it, it just it isn't especially when you learn about like the life of muhammad and you learn about all the battles that he was engaged in you'd think that these people would have a grasp and understanding of what a battle what a war is because the person that they admire the most was a warlord not even questionably he was a warlord he was a he was a military strategist he won his fair share of battles you should understand what a war is not this fucking playground nonsense of oh they met up and then behind each other's backs people just started killing each other thousands of people stop it stop it moving on nazia khan saw who is someone who trophies themselves as an ex-muslim she posted about eid this week and posted a bunch of pictures uh of like animals being slaughtered in the streets and stuff which is a common thing for a, a certain group of people to always do every single year however this time around she made a very significant mistake there are two eids eid al-fitr and eid al-adha now Eid al-Adha demands a sacrifice because of the story of Ibrahim and his him going and killing his son. It's a really fucked up story. It's something we should definitely talk about at some time. Looking at you, ex call baby. Looking at you. She decided to post these pictures and the tweet no longer exists. I'm terrible at my job. Just fire me right now. But she had posted these pictures and, and denounced all Muslims by saying, look at these savages, sort of nonsense. And it's funny because Eid al-Fitr does not demand a sacrifice. Thankfully, I do think that the tweet was removed. I don't know if it was removed by Twitter or if Nazia had realized the mistake she made. She she posted about the wrong Eid, claiming to be an ex-Muslim, which I find hysterical. And we don't, I just want to reiterate, we do not tolerate anti-Muslim bigotry. You get to decide what you believe. You want to be a Muslim, that's fine. We have no problem with that. When you go out of your way to be intolerant and just make up a bunch of shit, and you just, you just do this to shit on people. I think it's a little insensitive, not a little insensitive, it's, it's offensive. It's discriminatory and we will not stand for it. I should really do a deep dive into this person's uh, profile a little in future. Maybe I'll uh, get Shmariana on board or Gaga on board because I think that they would have um, a few choice words to say about this profile specifically. Moving on, uh, Dosa had quote tweeted a tweet by Uncle Yari saying that Somali men aren't afraid just because we avoid feminist women who have abandoned their deen and Dahkan, Dahkan, don't know what that means, I've forgotten what that means, to imitate Galo. Galo is like disbelievers or I'm guessing it also means like white people, but I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm, I've only heard it used in the context context of um, like kafirs and non-believers and challenged the authority of men in their life. And Dosa responded by saying, I think some people need to polish up on their definition of feminism. Why is challenging the authority of men a bad thing? In fact, women don't have to be independent because all humans are born independent but shackled by the chains of culture. How do you expect progression if we can't challenge the wrong in our society? I'd like to hear what your idea of men having authority over women means because that sounds like you see yourself above females. So apparently a woman getting a degree and voicing her opinions means she's left her culture and religion? That is exactly the type of damage religion does. Thank you Dosa for throwing that into the mix. I really, really appreciate that. It's really sad, like really sad when men are so insecure in their own position in society that they have to they have to openly say that they want women to be inferior it's very very sad and i don't think i need to add much more to that now we will move on to some some very pressing questions that everyone seems to have for me now on twitter i had asked for people to ask me anything uh Shmariana asks me why are you the best uh i was born this way um, <laughs> uh, Nick asked me, what are you most proud of? What am I most proud of? Probably, I think it amazes me every single day that I'm alive. Like it truly, like I know that might sound a little dramatic, but it does literally amaze me that I wake up every morning and I think, how the fuck am I alive? I think my proudest moments are those moments in the morning. <laughs> 
<laughs> where I sit up and I'm just amazed at the fact that it doesn't matter if I'm in pain, if I'm feeling miserable, it doesn't matter. It, it is just always such a surprise to me. And I don't even know if it's a good surprise. It's just a surprise. So that's what I'm most proud of, that I can constantly surprise myself with how alive I am. <laughs> Jimmy says, who's your favorite gay? I mean, that's obvious. Dude, we're married. <laughs> You're my gay husband. I've said this on many occasions. In Mort Veritas or Nick says, I speak with a mouth and hear without ears. I have no body, but I come alive with wind. What am I? I'm not sure, I'll have to Google that afterwards. Maybe I'll, maybe people in the comments can, can guess, I don't know. I haven't heard that riddle. What did you have for breakfast? I do not have breakfast, Novadia. I know it's the most important meal of the day. I understand that, but also, I don't have breakfast. It's not something I do. I like having meals, and for me, breakfast is a little bit of a waste of time, and I feel like people are gonna be angry at me for that. Tani says, have you been in contact with your siblings? No, Tani, you ask me this every single time. I ask for people to ask me anything. I have not had contact with my siblings since 2015, because I am not allowed to have contact with them. Um, well, there is no active restraining order. I have been told violently by my family and by people in my community that I will not be the one to influence my siblings. But they have my contact details, they have my email address. I'm a YouTube star at this point, so they know that I'm around and if they really wanted to get in contact with me, it's not going to be the most difficult thing in the world. But no, I have not been in contact with my siblings. Absoluta Nullpunkt asks, favorite berserk character, favorite character development, and favorite character design. Guts, Guts, and Guts. Guts is my favorite character in Berserk. I think that he has the most interesting character development, and he definitely looks the best. Hands down, no question. He's my, it, Berserk is my favorite thing in the whole world. And it would not, I very rarely like the main characters of stories because I feel like they're very, they're easily trophied. Whereas with Guts, it's very difficult to place him anywhere. He's an extremely human character. He's my favorite character. He has the most interesting character development and his character design constantly gets this like fresh new update with like, they had like the golden age where he had his armor set and then they had like the black swordsman arc and then it's um, now the Berserker armor, um, and that's like had a very um, severe effect on his body and the way his appearance is. So, you know, there's definitely a transition, and with each transition, there's also character development. There's a lot that goes into, there's a lot that goes into Guts, and I like that about him. Cardiff Atheist asks, who do you watch on YouTube for news? I don't watch the news. My news comes from my Twitter feed and from the explore section on Twitter. Whatever's trending, that's what I read. Um, I have enough going in here that I don't often find time to keep up with um, current events and current affairs. It's, it's just the way that I'm functioning right now. 42 says, have you, if you ever come to Canada, I will be happy to be your tour guide so you will, so you will let me know if you ever make the hop over. I do want to go to Canada at some point and I would not mind having a tour guide so I will definitely hit you up if I need one. Um, yeah, although it's a little strange to be asked that. Uh, the Infidel asked, who influenced you the most to be an ex-Muslim? Uh, my brain? I didn't watch any ex-Muslim content before leaving Islam. It, it was definitely an independent struggle. Um, I, I wasn't influenced by anybody to become an ex-Muslim. I left Islam because I felt like I couldn't be a part of it anymore. What is my biggest weakness? My biggest weakness is probably my guilt and all of the things that are associated to it and the way that it affects me. That's probably my biggest weakness. I've, I carry a lot of guilt a lot of the time for no reason and that might be everything oh no saki asked why are you so ugly i was born this way 
I don't personally think I'm ugly, but to ask why puts a big question mark on everything, doesn't it? <laughs> like, can you see? Do you have the ability to understand beauty? Did you put your glasses on this morning? Are you wearing the wrong type of contacts? You know, do you have glaucoma? Cataracts? Are you aging? Do you have your eyes open? It, it leads us to a lot of questions, because I don't personally think I'm very ugly. I think I'm, well, I wouldn't say that I'm the most beautiful human alive, but I mean, I don't think I'm ugly. If I saw me in the street, would I immediately go and talk to me? Probably not, because I know me, and anyone who approaches me like that, usually, especially if they walk up behind me, gets elbowed this way, because I don't like being surprised. I don't really know how to answer that, Saki, but thank you for your question. <laughs> anyway, that's all we have time for today. I hope you've had a good time, and I'm sorry that this is a slightly more uneventful uh, simp warfare, and we did something completely else in the, in, at the end. Um, just because that's why what I wanted to do today. Um, thank you for tuning in, and I am sorry about the low energy, but you know, if you see a dumb argument online and you want it to be featured on this, in this series, on this channel, uh, please do remember to hashtag it with Simp Warfare, and um, or you can tag me, tag me with at Rotten Fire. Uh, that is my Twitter handle that I am currently using, and. You know, if you like these segments and you like spending time with me every Saturday, please do remember to like, share and subscribe. We're trying to reach 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So feel free to advertise my channel for me. I really, really do have a good time making videos and hanging out with you guys. Also, if you would like to support me in a more monetary way, please do feel free to check out the links in the description for my Patreon, my PayPal and my Amazon wishlist if you want to just buy me some shit that I've put on, put on there. Obviously there's no obligation to, this is a pretty free platform, I would say. Um, so yeah, thank you for joining me and I will see you in the next video. Bye!